The most flexible way to use backing tracks on stage is to use Ableton Live. And one of the edits, the changes we often get caught on to make as playback techs, as music directors, is to remove a part of a song from a section of a song. So for example, say, let's put no drums in the intro. Let's remove the guitar from the bridge. Now, as with most things in Ableton Live, there's multiple ways to make this happen. And I will bet that you're doing this in a way that's inflexible and takes too much time. So I wanna share an alternative way to make this happen in today's tutorial. So I've got a song pulled up here in Ableton Live, and let's talk about how most of us make this happen. So let's say uh, for this particular example, I wanna take the drums right here, this section of drums, out from the A section of my song. So we'll think of this as like our intro or verse. Um, what most of us do is we go, okay, uh, I've got my section here, I need to automate my volume to take that out. So we would go in, we'd enable automation mode here, we'd go to mixer, uh, make sure we have that selected, make sure we have track volume selected, and we're gonna automate our drums to be out for that particular section of our song. So we add a couple automation points. If you're like me, you often forget and, and don't add an extra automation point. So you gotta double click, and then you drag this back up, then you go too high, it takes a little bit, and then, you know, in total, that doesn't take too, too long, 10, 15 seconds to make that change. Um, and you think, okay, we're good. So Will, what's wrong with that? Well, here's one of the main reasons why I don't like that approach. Let's say we've got our automation happening, but later on through the song, um, either the audio engineer or the artist or someone in the band goes, man, the drums are just way too loud in this song. You go, okay, easy, simple fix. Go over to session view here. I'm gonna drink, bring my drums down. Uh, and everything's good. Well, then you go back and you play your song and you uh, listen to this part. You can actually see the automation is grayed out here. And what happens is I disabled the automation by changing it uh, by moving my volume fader here. So you can see the main problem with this is one, I mean, yes, I think it takes too long to do that. But two, the biggest issue is it, it limits my flexibility to then go and adjust the volume. And for those of you that are avid readers of the manual, you're saying, yeah, but Will, of course, you could go in and you could select all this and you could bring this down. Um, yes, that's certainly possible, but I think there's a better approach. And as always in Ableton Live, there's multiple ways to make things happen. For example, instead of automating uh, the way I did here, I could go into my clip and I could automate the clip gain uh, so I could adjust the gain on the clip, go into envelopes here, go to clip, adjust gain and automate that, uh, as opposed to automating the volume. That's certainly one way to make that happen, but I still think that takes too long in my personal opinion. Uh, if you're in session view, you get a really nice feature in session view that um, uh, I wish Ableton would give us an arrangement view where you could actually go in and automate the modulation and not the track volume. And modulation is basically like a, a, a sub level um, a, a kind of level below the volume to where I can make changes of that and then I can move the volume and it's a percentage change. But we don't get that in a range of view. So Ableton, if you're watching, why is it not in a range of view? Please give us modulation in a range of view. But even if we did get modulation in a range of view, I still think there's a better approach to this. So let's go back to our song here in a range of view. Let's say, okay, we wanna remove drums from the A section of our song. Instead of going into automation mode, instead of uh, using our envelope to draw things in, this is what I would do. So let's say we get called to make that change. I'll make sure I'm out of automation mode. I'm just gonna select that portion of the clip that I want to uh, remove. It's this portion of the clip of the drum, uh, overall drum clip. Two things we could do here. One, we could hit delete and we would delete that clip, it would be gone. But what I actually prefer doing, and I'll explain why, is clicking on this and hitting zero. Uh, and that's deactivating the clip. The, the other way I could do this is go to the top of my clip here, right click and do deactivate clip. You could deactivate it that way. And the reason I like this is if I have my song zoomed out and I'm kind of looking at an overall view of my song, I can really quickly see these sections of the song, the parts of my song where I've removed that clip. That helps me know if, if for some reason, um, and you know, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but you're working with an artist, you're working with someone that says something just doesn't sound right in that intro. It sounds like we're missing something. Instead of playing a guessing game, I can really quickly unfold my tracks here, right? So everything's folded up. It looks nice, neat, and clean, but I can really quickly unfold my tracks and go, oh, well, I took the drums out because remember two weeks ago, you said take the drums out and they go, oh yeah, that's right. And they either say, let's leave it. Or most likely they say, I never said that. Bring the drums back and you go, Okay, great boss, yeah, you definitely never said that. You click, hit zero, and you're good to go. Story over, right? Uh, but you may be going, well, this is great, but what if I, I actually wanted to fade out into nothing, and then I wanted to fade back in. 
Um, that's why I automate volume. Well, you can still do that this way without ever going into automation mode. Here's how I do this. So we've got that portion of our clip deactivated. Uh, let's go to this drum section here, which is actually building. And we want to kind of, it's anticlimactically building to nothing. Let's actually take that out. We want to just kind of fade that out. So what I can do, again, I'm not in automation mode. So automation mode is disabled. Uh, I can go to the edge of my clip here and you'll see this little square box show up. And that is my fade handle. So what I'm going to do is just click and drag. And that's going to start to apply a fade to my drum. So we have that initial hit, then it fades out. It's a little more smoother. Now, obviously on this side, the drums are just starting. What if we want to fade into those? So I could add my fade here, right? And move that in and it's going to slowly fade in. Uh, you may also want to nudge that clip over and have the fade start a little sooner. So I don't know if you even caught what I did there. It just kind of automatically did what I needed it to do. I applied my fade and I went, no, actually I want that to start sooner. So I click and uh, drug my clip back and it added my fade out of this section of nothingness to full volume. And again, what's beautiful about this is if I go back over to session view, I have full control over my volume. Uh, those fades are not affected. Those fades are just percentage changes, right? They're not absolute automation. And that section of my song is gone there, which is really, really great. So I think if you're called upon by MD, by uh, an artist to remove sections of a song, I think that's the fastest, most flexible way to do that in Ableton Live. But it's possible you're watching this and you're going, but Will, there's still times where I need to automate volume. Are you saying I'm basically just kind of stuck and I have to live with that limitation? Well, not quite. I'm gonna show you what I think is a better way to automate volume in Ableton Live, but I'll show you that in a second. But before I do, I wanna encourage you, if you're interested in uh, learning how to use Ableton Live on stage for backing tracks, or maybe you've been doing this for a while, but you still feel limited, you feel like it takes forever, you want more spontaneity, you wanna spend less time building your set, that's certainly possible in Ableton Live, but you've gotta follow the right roadmap. You've gotta know the exact process and way to make that happen. And I've spent many, many years working with thousands upon thousands of students all across the globe to develop a process and a way of using tracks that gives you the ultimate amount of flexibility and freedom. Uh, that's very efficient. It doesn't take uh, hours and hours to build your set every single time, plus a way that's incredibly, incredibly stable. If you want access to that process, I've put together a free track template that you can download by heading to from studio to stage dot com slash template. If you're new to running tracks or even if you've been using tracks for many, many years and you're in session view because you were told that it gives you more flexibility, more spontaneity, you need to learn how to use tracks in Ableton Live the right way. The way that's going to, again, make your life easier and give you more spontaneity and flexibility. So head to from studio stage dot com slash template, download my free track template that's available for Mac and PC, every version of Ableton Live, every edition of Ableton Live. Plus when you're there and you download it, you're not going to be left on your own to figure out how to use it. You get access to a free six day email course. So I'm going to show you exactly how to use this template with your tracks to format your tracks and to build your set. And you'll learn all about what I call the three part framework for using tracks on stage, which again, it's going to give you uh, the, the most flexible, efficient, stable uh, way to use tracks on stage. So if you want access to that, head to from studio to stage.com slash template. Now let's talk about how to automate volume in Ableton Live in a way that gives us, I think, a little more flexibility. So let's go back to our song here. And I've already got a, uh, a kind of duplicate of this uh, group track here set up. Let's say in this case, I did actually want to automate the drum volume. Well, as opposed to going in and automating the drum volume, I I'm going to enable automation mode here and I'm going to choose utility and choose utility gain. Now you may be going, Will, where in the world did utility come from? Well, I'll show you a hack on how to speed this up and make this happen automatically. But essentially what I did is I went into Live's browser here. I went to audio effects. I scrolled down to find utility and I clicked and I drug that into my track, right? So you can see utility added there. So I have a utility effect on every single one of my audio tracks in Ableton Live. But again, hang out because in a moment I'll show you how to automatically have utility added to your track. But here's the big benefit of using utility. So what I can do is go into drums, go into gain. If I leave this set to zero, there, there's effectively nothing happening. There's no gain being added. There's no gain being taken away. But let's say we want to just nudge this down and we want to have it start pretty loud and then for the rest of the song, you know, bring our gain down to dB. So what I could do is I could click right here on gain. Let's click here. And then we're just going to bring this down and we'll set it to about 2 dB. Now, another great benefit of doing this is let's say I actually wanted that crossfade to be applied automatically. 
into that section. Uh, let's right click and let's do a uh, fixed grid and let's set this to 16th notes. And I'm gonna select this amount of space here, right? And then I'm gonna right click and let's do a fade so that that fades out. And you can see that's automatically applied there, right? And I go, okay, this is great, but let's actually have this come down a little bit. I mean, you can see I can get really, really customized, really, really flexible um, and, and get this you know, set exactly the way I want to. And you can see some of the different shapes that we have here that we can add uh, in our automation. Now, what's really nice about this is I can double click this point to remove it. So let's double click there. Uh, it drops down. I go, actually, I don't want this to be 11 dB. Let's right click. Let's do edit value. Let's do minus two and that's going to fade ever so slightly to 2 dB and remain constant throughout our song. So we've automated our volume and said, let's drop this to, you know, we have our intro, let's drop it down 2 dB. It's gonna stay at that level throughout the rest of our song. We can do other automations here if we wanted to. But again, what happens if, hey, that's still too loud, we need to drop it down. Well, instead of being on stage and trying to make that automation happen, which maybe could be kind of pesky, could be kind of dif difficult. Obviously the edit value command makes it a lot easier. Uh, I do this instead. Okay, so we need to drop this uh, a little bit more. I just hit tab, I go over to drums, and I just drop my fader down. Now I could certainly, again, expand my track here and say, okay, I'm gonna drop this 4 dB in total. And then what happens is uh, that automation of utility is going to happen between this point and the bottom point here, right? It's not gonna start from here and go down. It's gonna start from this point and go down. So I have the automation on my track, right? Let's go back to utility gain. I have that slight little automation here that's happening, but I still have a fader, a, a, an entire volume of a fader that I can adjust really, really easily to make those changes. So again, obviously there's multiple ways to make things happen in Ableton Live, but when you're using Ableton Live on stage, we need to prioritize the way that's most flexible, uh, that gives us the most freedom and flexibility and, and the way that's the fastest way. So again, I think when it comes to removing sections and parts of our songs, deactivate those clips as opposed to automating volume. Use your fades in and out of clips to make your volume changes there. But if you absolutely do have to automate volume, use this utility trick to make that happen. Now I promised, I'm gonna show you how to set up your tracks where utility can automatically add to them. But before I do that, I wanna ask if you like content like this, if you wanna learn how to use Ableton Live on stage, the most flexible way, uh, then just subscribe to this channel costs you absolutely nothing. You can hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon, and you'll see exactly when I uh, post new content twice a week so that you're always informed, up to date, and are using Ableton Live in the most flexible way possible. So here's how we can set this up. What I'm gonna do is create a new audio track. So I'm gonna do Command T, be Control T if I'm on a PC, and we'll just add this to the end here so that we can just kind of view this separately, okay? So let's group that up. Now, I'm gonna go back to my browser, let's go to Utility, let's click, and let's drag this in. So now I have a utility added to my audio track. I can go up to the track title bar here, right click and do save as default audio track, right? So as a default audio track already exists, do you wanna override it? Yes, I do, so I click yes. And then here's what's so great about this. Now when I go and add a new audio track, Command T, let's click on the track, you'll see at the bottom we have utility added. So if you're interested in using that, that tip and that trick of uh, using utility to automate gain, then make sure you save your default audio track with utility on it and use this to customize however you want. Without building a brand new template for Ableton Live, you can customize your audio tracks to load with your default processing chains on them for every single track. Uh, it's an amazing tip to help you speed up your workflow. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. Again, if you wanna see more content like this, make sure to subscribe, enable the bell icon. If you have suggestions for future comment, leave uh, content, leave a comment below. I always look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.